Hi, I'm Randy McLean, the president of Waypoint Analytics. I'm here with Bruce Merrifield, my uh, partner and co-conspirator in profitability for Waypoint clients. Um, this is the latest in our series of War Stories videos uh, where we talk about some of the common circumstances that you may run into. Uh, you may find some of these things interesting, instructive, and maybe even entertaining. Uh, but they'll give you some good insights on the kinds of things that people can do and, and uh, have done uh, to raise the bottom line and to, to solve specific kinds of issues. Um, in this uh, session, we're going to talk about what Bruce calls the Schwarzkopf uh, uh, issues. And uh, so, Bruce, I'll let you take that away and explain why that is. Okay. Uh, so you do a customer profitability ranking report. You go to the bottom of the report. You see what, what it seemed to be really you know, good customers because the sales are good, the margin dollars are good, but the transactional costs are even higher, so you're losing money. And initial reaction is, I don't, I don't want to see this. I don't want to believe this. How can we mess around with the model so instead of losing 18 grand, it only loses 15 grand, and we take the other three and stick it to somebody else because you know, there's no free lunch here. But, but you say, wait a minute, it doesn't matter. If we're losing money, we're losing money. Why, 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 why? What's the root cause? We use deep dive analytics to sort of find out. And you will find in the bottom 10 uh, biggest losing accounts out of 1,000, literally sort of statistical freaks of nature. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Schwarzkopf reference is I, I had the, the, the joy of actually being on a program where General Schwarzkopf was speaking. It was probably 1995 or six, and he's a hero because of Desert Storm. And uh, I met him in the speaker's lounge real thrill. I didn't ask for his autograph, but I did shake his head and thank, his, thank him for his service to the country. In his speech, which I caught, he was describing how he flies in to do some, you know, tour of a, a big, big base. And mm -hmm. so there's a two-star general, and he's like three or four at the time. And uh, to show you maybe what an extra star is worth, he's getting the tour. He walks into officer headquarters, and uh, there are two guards, two random guards in some random hallway just sitting there with their helmets and their you know, guns and mm -hmm. so forth. And uh, they kind of salute these guys. And he says to the two-star guy, what are those guys doing here? And he goes, Gee, I don't know. Uh, they, they were there when I got here nine months ago. So the two-star guy wasn't asking the question. Right. But Fresh Eyes comes in with three stars and says, what is it? he said, find out and get back to me. So the guy sheepishly got back to him and said, well, actually, three years ago, they painted the doorway, and they were afraid that somebody would bump into the doorway and schmear, you know, fuss up the, 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 the paint or get it on your, and or get it on your uniform. So they put the guards on there till it was dry. They just forgot to write the paperwork to take them off. So 24-7, 365, the last three and a half years, we've been protecting the doorway. <laughs> so you will find stuff like that. Between the silos of purchasing guys and production, you find weeds. That just, you're, you're, well, you, you had an incident, uh, uh, instance uh, where there was a special pallet involved, and, and you were looking at that customer profitability ranking. Right. Uh, in fact, you were looking at the uh, credits per invoice ranking in Waypoint. And you saw an extraordinarily high number of credits right, for a right. particular customer. Yeah, so here, here are a couple of uh, you know, easy loser to winner, you know, bottom of the report uh, stories involve pallets. One was, and we got into this, and actually it was, it, was, it, was a, it was still a marginally profitable count. But when we looked at credits divided by transactions, it was, uh, it was like equals, like, a, you know, 100 credits and 100 transactions in a year's time. That just looks at what's that all about? So you dig deep and you find out that long ago, a contract was cut where a distributor is delivering three pallets of consumable stuff, packaging materials, to big industrial account. And they were delivering back up the truck to a semi-automated receiving place. And the customer said, all vendors will buy these special heavy duty access from each angle skids and, and at your own expense. Mm. And apparently, as best we could figure out, the previous branch manager said, I don't want to expense it to my P&L and make my numbers look bad for a month. Mm -hmm. The salesman said, well, I'm not eating it out of my commissions. And the customer said, we're not paying it. Every, the vendors are going to supply it. So the solution that emerged, and I don't know how they did this, but the, skids, the, the three skids would go out and the customer would get billed for three skids. Mm -hmm. And since they would give you three returnable bottle, you know, things to take back to keep cycling around, right. Then, then the distributor had to issue a credit for billing them for their three skids, but thank you for the three skids, so we will ne neutralize it out. So it was just this paper shuffle, but it was costing about $4,000 a back office fully loaded expense that was going, getting allocated to the account. Not to mention the customer's paying his side. Of it, well, yeah, exactly. So there, we did, I don't know that they even bothered. They said, just, said, just stop it. Don't bill them for it, and then don't send them credits. And if the customer calls them and says, I want some credit paperwork, well, then mm -hmm. tell them what the story is. But, yeah. 
So that that's you find. So, so what of, happened? They, they basically just cut that thing out, fix the account, you know, and I, didn't I, even have to call in the customer. I, I moved on. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. You know, but they they, just, they, they stopped doing it. I, maybe they, maybe right. the, if I were a sales guy, I'd run over and say, hey, here's what I did to save some money for you, type of thing. But, yeah. um, and the other skid thing was. Uh, Again, an account, a uh, big, big account, brand name, very prestigious. Everybody in the area would love to have this account. And my, my client, White Point client, has the, has the, the thing. They go down, this big loser. And as they're digging deep, they realize it's even a bigger loser because all these little orders are having to be packed separately on skids. So you're, you're going through the customer rank and you find some customer with a huge transaction count. Yeah. And you find out that... Um, there's a lot. There's three, four, five invoices going out sure. to, I mean, the, to this guy you, because you get, you get a one roll of duct tape and it's got it's on a skid all lashed down. Oh, good grief! Oh yeah, you see 15 skids going out to this one guy, you know, because people different people di oh on. different people in the plant were ordering stuff and all had to be delivered to the back dock on separate skids. Why? Well, Honcho goes out, makes a little call to Honcho and says, you know, there's no bad guy here. We love you and so forth, but. We know you're trying to be green. What are you doing with all these disposable skids that we're giving you? And we're losing our rear end, you know, buying them type of thing. And the guy said, this is crazy. I have the no guy, idea. The guy says, no, he doesn't, has no, no idea. So they go down together into the weeds, you know, between the silos and chat with the guys at the dock and say, where did this happen? And it's, it's the two guard story. Three years earlier, there was a dock manager who blew out his back and didn't want to get off his lift truck. So he just told all suppliers, everything has to be delivered on a skid. Okay. And then he retired. So, oh. so this continues to go. So that, that was just part of, of, of turning this into a wonderfully profitable account. Well, that's actually interesting because you've got these zombie processes that get started up for logistical or clerical reasons, and they may go on for a long period of time. And, and literally, it, it could be just one quirky person decides mm -hmm. to do something different. I mean, I could tell you another story where basically a guy, a customer male, was sort of sweet on an inside sales gal. So the way he could talk to her every day was to give her an order every day. Instead of once every two weeks, he was just giving her a little order every day. And when they, you know, we got into it and sort of figured out, ooh, how are we going to get out of this one? So the solution was, uh, it was diplomatically done, and basically now stuff was ordered once every two weeks. But the inside salesperson would call mm -hmm. the customer every day with the, the joke of the day. Oh, so... So, uh, yeah, good, good. No, so I mean, you, stuff, you find stuff like that as well. Well, it's interesting. Um, uh, one of the ways that companies discover these things is sometimes they get new blood in. There'll be a new manager comes in, he sees something outside of his experience, sure. Or, sure. and uh, say, you know, why do we do this? Yeah. And, and, and then when they start digging, they'll find out that maybe it's not there. But if you've been around for a long time and these things are sort of going by, it's like the base commander, you know, you've seen the guys every day and not, he's not thinking about what the process is. Right, right. So if you want to raise your uh, management level, yeah. uh, the one thing you probably ought to be doing is asking why about things. From sure, why why sure. do we do this? Is it still necessary? Does it, you know, does it make sense for us anymore? Is this something that was designed in the 80s that doesn't apply in the new millennium? Right, right. So, and, and there's some real benefit, and uh, superior managers will actually do that kind of thing. And you'll typically find <clears throat> these really freaks of nature uh, where you're actually selling product into some large entity. Because mm -hmm. in large entities, political, bureaucratic, stupid stuff happens. And then the people figure out workarounds. You don't typically find it in, and in, in if I'm selling to a contractor, I may have a huge small order problem. Yeah. But it's because the, the guy who owns the contracting business has a good general concept, but it doesn't apply equally perfectly to everything. So yeah. it creates a hidden waste for both sides. Yeah, that's a good topic. And, there, there, and there's more fur on that as far as getting that, yeah. that figured out. So we'll talk about that in, in one of the future videos. At any rate, thank you very much for spending some time with us on this video. We'll look forward to catching you on the, on the uh, balance of them. So please make sure you check them out and uh, put some of this stuff to work so that you can make some profits in places that you weren't expecting. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Hi, it's Randy McLean. If you found this video helpful, we have so much more to share with you. Just head over to apicconference.com profit and sign up for our innovative profit tip series. It's a great collection of materials all designed to show you how to drive more profit in your business without necessarily having to increase sales. Or simply text your name and email address to 480-207-3433 and we'll get you started right away.